So it's that time of year again. Techtober is officially here and there's no better way to kick off the season than by checking in with two tech giants, Apple and Samsung. And for the here and now, I think the best way to get a finger on the pulse of who's winning this forever war between these eternal rivals is to compare their latest offering on the smartphone front. Apple recently debuted its iPhone 15 lineup with the iPhone 15 Pro Max representing the company's top flagship offering. And so far, it's been really well received. Orders for this phone have been racking up despite this phone having a new record setting price tag. But Samsung may have already garnered a significant lead over Apple with its over-the-top Galaxy S23 Ultra it launched early in the year. It's been deemed the quintessential premium device that many feel rightfully deserves the crown. So today, I thought I'd do a comparison review to see how these Goliaths stack up against each other in multiple different product categories, ultimately to help you decide which one is the right phone for you. And real quick, let me know in the comments which phone you think is better. I'm curious to see which phone gets more love. Okay, first, let's talk about physical design. Both Apple and Samsung are kind of at a point where updates in this arena are going to be iterative at best, but they definitely approach this category in different ways. And let's start with the iPhone 15 Pro Max. It retains the general form factor that this phone has had for essentially three generations now, but they have made some notable updates this year. Number one, Apple decided to use titanium as opposed to stainless steel for its frame. Seems to be the company's new favorite build material for the here and now. And overall, I welcome this change for a variety of reasons. Number one, titanium is stronger than the previous metals Apple has used before, so it should make it much harder to bend or dent the frame. But the main benefit to me is the weight reduction. Titanium is much lighter than stainless steel despite being stronger. The Pro Maxes of the past were beautifully put together, but they were seriously fatiguing to hold for extended periods of time. So this design change makes the 15 Pro Max a lot more comfortable to hold. And it's super subtle and you probably can't even notice this with the naked eye, but Apple ever so slightly chamfered the edge of the frame, so it's not completely squared off like before. The old design made the frame harder to grip and it almost felt like the frame was cutting into your hand. This minor change goes a long way to alleviate that issue. The new colors this year are pretty solid too. A lot of love being thrown to this new natural titanium that legit does look nice, but I don't know, I'm kind of falling for this sleek blue titanium. It looks so stealthy and clean. But aside from those changes, the iPhone 15 15 Pro Max really hasn't changed that much. It still has that triple camera setup in this glossy camera housing, which provides nice contrast against the frosted back. The display on the front does have a slightly smaller bezel than before for an even more immersive viewing experience, and the mute switch has been replaced with a new action button. More on that later when we talk about functionality. All to say, the design of the iPhone 15 Pro Max continues to live up to the luxurious standards Apple set a while back when first introducing this variant of the Pro lineup. It's the epitome of simplistic elegance when talking form factor, and despite it being pretty familiar at this point, it's still a wonderfully put together phone. Now, when talking about the S23 Ultra, it too has a very similar design to last year, but with some notable improvements. You still get that very in-your-face boxy frame with those signature sharp corners. You get good old-fashioned aluminum here, so nothing fancy, but it's very well put together and it makes this behemoth of a phone not feel like a brick when you're holding it. Plus, whether or not you actually use it, the S23 Ultra has a slot for the Galaxy S Pen that's integrated into the frame, which I always thought was an underrated thing from a design standpoint. You also get a very minimal clean look on the back with this matte glass finish and floating camera design. I'm still a little bit iffy about the S23 Ultra having no camera housing whatsoever. I think it makes the phone come off a bit too vanilla and I feel as though it lacks any distinguishing visual design elements. But that's probably something most won't care or think about, especially considering that the front display of this phone is one of the largest and most immersive screens in the game today. It has a whopping 6.8 inches of screen real estate, so a tad bigger than the 15 Pro, and love it or hate it, it still has that slightly curved design to give you that infinity look. Now, I prefer a completely flat screen, but this curve is less aggressive than it was years prior, and there's no denying that the S23 Ultra doesn't all come together to look and feel like a super premium device. Now, when comparing it against the iPhone 15 Pro Max, there's no clear winner in my opinion when it comes to overall design. It's really going to come down to preference. I personally think that the iPhone is a slightly more premium Lexus-like phone with the use of titanium. It maintains Apple's commitment to giving users a luxurious form factor while making the Pro Max a lot more comfortable to use. The S23 Ultra has more of a sportier BMW-like design that is still luxury but a bit more stealthy and aggressive. So I'm going to call this one a tie, but I am going to say this. Both phones are in desperate need of a design overhaul as these form factors are starting to get a bit stale and the first company to do so is going to have a significant advantage over the other going into next year. Okay, next, let's talk about features and performance on both of these phones and let's start with the Galaxy S23 Ultra. This one is powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip that does have some minor customization for the Galaxy, which is a first here. It was never really 
made clear how much customization was done, but generally speaking, the S23 Ultra has performed great throughout the year, probably the most refined performance I've seen on the Ultra since it debuted a few years back. Navigating around the UI is smooth, especially with Samsung's class-leading 120Hz variable refresh rate. Still the silkiest performance within the Android space in my opinion. This of course is off Samsung's top-end AMOLED panel that comes in at a quad HD plus resolution and is absolutely stunning, so watching videos and playing games with this phone is a power user's dream come true. As mentioned earlier, the S23 Ultra has the built-in S Pen that also performs very well, very little latency when writing, and there's a good amount of unique functions built into the S Pen itself. The ultrasonic fingerprint sensor is probably the best overall in-display option to date. It's fast and much more secure than simpler optical sensors. Moreover, One UI also has some very well executed multitasking features that take advantage of the larger screen real estate you're privy to on this phone. And though I don't personally use it, by plugging in the S23 Ultra to an external display, you get access to Samsung DeX that virtually changes your phone into a mobile desktop computer. So the S23 Ultra is a beast when it comes to features. That's really no surprise, but let's see how it stacks up against the new iPhone 15 Pro Max. This is the first iPhone that's powered by Apple Apple's new Pro chip, and it's early, but this new processor is already starting to look really impressive. Of course, everything runs buttery smooth on iOS, with extra silky goodness here with the ProMotion display, my personal favorite high refresh rate technology. And the new A17 Pro chip has enough horsepower to apparently run console level games. I'm not that big of a gamer, so I haven't tried yet, but the mobile games that I play every now and then run great. Really nice with the larger screen and high refresh rate, all displayed through a beautiful XDR Super Retina OLED panel. Now, one limitation with the Pro Max is that Apple hasn't really leveraged its software to take advantage of this larger screen when it comes to multitasking. It's really just a blown up version of iOS. Plus, you don't get any additional tools like the S Pen that power users may be looking for. That said, one of the newest features to make its way to the iPhone 15 Pro Max is that action button that allows you to map it to a function of your choice. It's not anything revolutionary, but because you can map it to a shortcut, you do actually have a lot of flexibility in terms of what that button could do. I have mine set to unlock my Tesla, and it is pretty great that my phone can double as a key fob. Now, all the new iPhones also finally made the switch over to USB Type-C, and there are some unique features tied to the pros. Number one, you get USB 3 data transfer speed so long as you have the right cable to import and export data between your phone and another device. You can also take advantage of some professional camera features like shooting 4K ProRes video in 60 frames per second. Again, you need to make sure that you have the right cable and external SSD attached, which is pretty cool if you're a camera nerd like me. But nothing like a Mac equivalent to DeX when you plug this into a monitor, which would have been awesome. We'll see if Apple brings anything like that in the future. Now, a key part of performance on any phone today is gonna to be battery life, and I'm happy to say that both the S23 Ultra and the 15 Pro Max do very well here. The S23 Ultra has a beefy 5,000 milliamp hour battery that has performed really well over the past year, even after software updates. I'm getting a good full day up to the next morning level of battery life during moderate use, which is really great. The iPhone 15 Pro Max so far is looking really promising. During my short time with the phone, I could get up to a day and a half of battery life, which is fantastic. It very much mirrors my experience with the 13 Pro Max, which had the best battery performance I've experienced up to this point. Now, I know it's early and my 14 Pro Max did terrible with battery life and battery health, so I'm definitely gonna monitor this closely over time, but so far the 15 Pro Max has some staggeringly good battery life. So when it comes to general features and performance, I'm gonna give the features win to the S23 Ultra. This one is just full of unique capabilities that I feel better aligned to the everyday consumer. Now you may never use the S Pen or the multitasking capabilities in One UI, but I think these are way more useful to the average Joe than the ability to shoot 4K 60 frames per second high-res video, if I'm being completely frank. I will, however, give the performance win to the 15 Pro Max. Yes, this phone has some pretty insane battery life, but the reason why it gets the win is because one of the most important components on any phone, and that, of course, is camera performance. Now, yes, the S23 Ultra does have more cameras with an astonishing five total at varying focal lengths, and when it comes to still image photography, it's an absolute beast. Photos are sharp and vibrant with punchy colors, and no lie, the 10 times zoom not only works really well, it's a surprisingly useful focal length. Now, the iPhone 15 Pro Max only has four cameras total, but they have updated larger sensors, and the 15 Pro Max does have a new five times optical zoom that also has been a lot of fun to use. Now, when looking at images side by side, it's really gonna come down to preference as it's more about picture profile than actual quality. If you prefer a more stylized, edited look, Samsung gives you the more contrasty, vibrant image that pops a bit more, but can't 
can come off a bit artificial at times. If you prefer a more natural look that also does slightly better with skin tones, the iPhone is likely going to be more your jam. Now, the Galaxy trumps the iPhone in zoomed in photos, considering that it does have that native 10 times optical zoom and some pretty intense space zoom features, but the iPhone can shoot in RAW if you want to get into some serious photo editing. Both phones also have a wealth of software features to enhance or modify your photos, like the ability to change a selfie into a portrait selfie after the fact. And look, brass tacks, both of these phones do great when it comes to still image photography, no doubt about it, but where one really starts to get the edge over the other, is with video quality. And I'm gonna say this off the rip, Samsung has made some noteworthy gains in video quality and I applaud them for that. They seem to be the only company that seems to understand that moving the needle in this area is important and the S23 Ultra is probably my favorite non-iPhone for video. Footage is sharp and it's gotten a lot better at not looking overly processed. The 8K video is also really good, especially if you have something being the main focal point in the frame and it's pretty incredible that this phone can even shoot in that resolution. But at the end of the day, it's still not at the level of what the iPhone can do in this arena. No phone is, to be completely honest. The 4K video on the 15 Pro Max is just on a different level as it's able to portray class lighting, sharpness, colors, and dynamic range all at the same time. And Apple really wanting to flex the new A17 Pro's muscles also added the ability to shoot 4K video in log, which is kind of absurd. Shooting in log gives you a very flat picture profile, but a ton of data to color grade the footage in post. Totally something I feel the vast majority of folks will never use, but no doubt an illustration on how beastly Apple's new processor is. And going into 2024, I'm just going to say it, I feel as though video quality is going to overtake still image quality in terms of what people want to need. And in that regard, Apple has a significant lead over everyone else here, even over a phone that boasts the term Ultra in its name. So at the end of the day, which phone is better, the Galaxy S23 Ultra or the iPhone 15 Pro Max? Now, I will say it's a lot closer than it was earlier in the year. I thought that the S23 Ultra trounced the 14 Pro Max. It's not that black and white for this matchup, mainly because both of these phones nail the fundamentals really well. I'd say if having a wealth of features is something that's important to you, the S23 Ultra is the way to go. There's so much that you could do with this device, and it can be an invaluable tool, especially if you're a power user. Now, if you're big on performance, especially camera performance, the iPhone 15 Pro Max is the tip of the sword here, truly living up to the pro name in my opinion. There's no camera suite on any phone right now as powerful as this one. Everything else, when it comes to form factor, design, display, battery life, and now even cost, both the S23 Ultra and the 15 Pro Max are pretty even keel. So it's great to see that both of these flagship offerings are solid choices. In my opinion, it really comes down to what's more important to you in those two areas. But hey, that's just me, and I want to know what you guys think. Which one do you guys think is better? The venerable S23 Ultra or the powerful iPhone 15 Pro Max? Curious to get your thoughts, let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. And in case you're looking for dedicated videos on both, check out these reviews here. They're going to help you be as informed as possible.